Syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection that can cause serious health problems if left untreated. It is caused by this spiral-looking bacteria called Treponema pallidum. In Singapore, we are seeing an average of about 1,500 cases of newly diagnosed syphilis yearly for the past five years. In Europe and America, there has been an increase in the number of syphilis cases going up by as much as 70% over the past 10 years. Syphilis is spread from person to person through sexual contact with the infected ulcers called shankers. Shankers can occur in, on, or around the penis, vagina, anus, rectum, and lips or mouth. They can spread during vagina, anal, or oral sex. Pregnant ladies with syphilis can also transmit the infection to their unborn child. You cannot get syphilis through casual contact with objects such as toilet seats, doorknobs, swimming pools, hot tubs, and bathtubs. You cannot get it through sharing of clothes or utensils as well. You can start to show symptoms of syphilis 10 days to 3 months from the exposure. Syphilis is referred to as the great pretender as its symptoms are varied and can mimic many other diseases. The infection can be divided into a few stages. Primary, secondary, latent, and tertiary syphilis. The primary stage is the first stage of infection. In this stage, a skin papil or skin bump will first appear and subsequently develop into an ulcer or multiple ulcers that are often painless, firm, and round. This happens usually at the location where the syphilis enters the body, such as in the private areas like the vagina or the penis. This shankers usually last three to six weeks and disappear on its own whether or not you received the treatment. And if left untreated, the disease progressed to the secondary stage within one to two months. In the secondary stage, there are a few prominent signs that may occur. Firstly, would be skin changes like a rash, hair loss, or skin growths called condyloma lata. Secondly, patients may also develop flu-like reactions. So let's talk more about the skin changes. The rash, this typical rash usually appears as rough red or reddish brown spots or patches on the body, palms and soles, and they usually do not itch. However, the rash may appear in various forms as well that may be misdiagnosed as other conditions. Secondly, condyloma lata are these skin growths that can be skin colored or grayish white, and they are typically raised and occur in moist areas like the groin the private area and the perianal area, even sometimes armpit and the mouth. They tend to occur near to where the initial shankar was seen, and they can be mistaken as warts in some cases. Hair loss is another common skin change. Loss of hair known as alopecia may occur on the scalp, the eyebrow, or in the beard area in patches or widespread. The flu-like symptoms that may occur includes fever, headache, and body aches, lethargy and fatigue, sore throat, swollen lymph nodes, loss of appetite, and even sometimes weight loss. So as you can see in secondary syphilis, the skin rash may look like other skin conditions, condyloma lata can be mistaken as viral wart, and flu-like symptoms can present like any other flu conditions, even COVID-19. Therefore, its famous alias, the Great Pretender. We must always have a high index of suspicion to diagnose syphilis. Secondary syphilis will then progress to latent syphilis if no treatment is given. This stage is the hidden stage where there are no symptoms and signs and it can last for years. Welcome family to another edition of Stranger Thinking Media. This is Yesha Yahoo. But we bring you the gospel of Yahusha HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, to address the problems of a modern world. Today's topic, the resurrection of syphilis, strange plagues, part eight. Topic one, STIS and STDs. Revelation 18 and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning 
standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. So, back at it again. Um, here we have Exodus chapter 9. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up for to show in thee my power and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth as yet exaltest thou thyself against my people that thou wilt not let them go. So, Today's topic is uh, STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, um, a, a really nasty plague upon the society, and uh, you know it's one of those things that can be stopped, right? But in order to stop it, you know, it doesn't matter how much medications you you develop. It's it's simply obeying the commandments of the Most High that would stop that. And that was a very, uh, if you look in the law, that was a very um, focused um, you know, thing in Israel where you, the system is set up to where you shall not commit fornication. And that's, there's a reason for that. Because like the apostle said, when you commit fornication, you sin against your own body. So, you know, grace, grace being a thing, understand that grace does not uh, alleviate your penalties for sin in, in the flesh. So, most people walk around thinking, oh, you know, it's grace, grace. God will forgive me for doing this thing. Yes, he will, if you're, if you're you know, truly repentant. However does not mean you won't walk away from whatever it was you did with some telltale uh, reminder. Like the Apostle Paul said, he, he, he had a thorn in his flesh to keep him humble. So if the Most High Yah realizes that you have a serious weakness with something and you're having trouble getting over that something, he might leave you with a thorn in your flesh just to keep you on track. And so, you know, at the end of the day, as, the, as King Solomon said, the wise man, the end of the matter is obey Yah, obey the Elohim, and keep their commandments, right? That's the whole duty of man. And yet, if you asked your average Joe in the street, you know, why are you here? Uh, what is your purpose? You know, most people are living a very meaningless existence. You know, they think they're a cosmic accident that evolved from a, a, a primordial pool from a single cell animal, which is, and I did a video on that too, which is crazy, because now that we understand DNA, we know that the, the odds of getting a viable uh, cell, you know, uh, randomly is one times 10 to the 77th power. What that means is the, in order for evolution to actually take place for a cell in your body to randomly generate and reproduce without killing you. Cause there's another word for that. It's called cancer, you know, and these, these random mutations tend to kill the body if they expand if they increase the number too much so evolutionists would have you believe that over time these random mutations allowed you to grow you know these these fish to grow legs at the same time that they grew lungs to walk out on it the odds of that happening i'm talking from species to another species is one times 10 to the 77th power. 
And th these cells have to be viable, meaning they can't they can't just take over and destroy the body. And so, uh, you know, that's another video. So I, I suggest you watch my uh, uh, videos on uh, evolution and dinosaurs and all that sort of thing. But that be said, that being said, uh, yeah, the Earth is not old enough for that to have occurred. In fact, the universe is not even old enough for that to have occurred. And you have no clue what a number like 1 times 10 to the 77th is. That number is so beyond your imagination. Um, if you think about it, if you just had, a, you know, a trillion $1 bills, and laid them flat, um, and you laid a trillion of them on top of each other flat, I'm not talking on edge, I'm talking flat, a trillion $1 bills would go like three quarters of the way to the moon. And that's just like one times 10 to the, what is it, the, the ninth or something like that. Anyway, yeah, you, you do the math. I don't have any paper in front of me. But <laughs> anyway, imagine one times 10 to the 77th. It's, you might as well say impossible. Not happening. Anyway, I digress. Um, what I do want to say is obey Yah. And keep his commandments. It'll keep you safe. And you won't have to bear the, uh, essentially the, the, the curses and the, of the sins that are falling upon this world. I mean, the solution is simple, but it's not simple. Exodus 9. And Yahuwah said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it towards heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. And it shall come to pass, excuse me, I keep saying that, and it shall become small dust in the land of Egypt, midst of them, and shall be a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. And Moses sprinkled it up towards heaven. And it became a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. For the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. And Yahuwah hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And he hearkened not unto them as Yahuwah had spoken unto Moses. So... For people who, it's almost like a hardness of the heart, you know, when people uh, harp on grace too much for me, that's a red flag. Not that you don't need grace, but if, if you're focused on grace, and it, don't, don't take my words out of context, grace is here to give you time to grow. As you grow, you start the commandments start becoming internalized to you. If you're saying that the commandments are done away with, well, then that's another spirit. That is not the spirit of the Most High. Like, uh, like Yahushua, Jesus Christ, like he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And then you have those who say, well, his, his commandments was, wasn't the Ten Commandments. It was, you know, if you love, to love God with all your heart and soul and uh, to love your brother, yeah, and if you notice, there were two tables of stone. One table, those five, those commandments focused on love of God. The other table focused on loving your neighbor. So those are the great commandments, but they encompass the Ten Commandments. In fact, there's like 613 commandments all told. So you have to at least be, you can't be fighting against it. Because that's a different spirit, you know. And if you remember, one of those commandments is to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And so I heard one preacher, I shall not name him, because he's a very, very famous, very powerful preacher, very rich, well-to-do guy. And he said, he, he got into this discussion about the Sabbath, and he said, now he, he's, a, he's a Christian, and he, he, he goes to church on Sundays, he preaches on Sundays, but... 
He said, well, I keep the Sabbath. And I said, well, good for you. I worship on Saturday. I said, good for you. I also worship on Friday. I said, uh-oh, I know where this is going. I also worship on Thursday. Uh, here we go. So you, you guys are not understanding. You're, you're falling back into Babylon with your understanding. You know, your man-made traditions. That's what Babylon is about. Because the very Hebrew word about keeping the Sabbath day holy, what, that's an English word, holy, right? What is the Hebrew word? It's Kadesh. And Kadesh simply means set apart, different, peculiar. He's saying you cannot keep every day the same. If you're worshiping on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way, if you worship every day, that's great. But it's still in violation of the Sabbath because the Sabbath has to be set apart, meaning even more special. Does that make sense? It's like if you if you read the Bible, I'm just making this up, okay? If you read the Bible every day um, while at lunch break at work during the week, right? Okay, you're worshiping. But come Saturday, you should not do so while work. So you should have all day to ponder the mysteries of the Most High. In other words, a set-apart day. And your entire weekend was kind of set up that way believe it or not. So if you look at the whole weekend set up in the Western world, it's to cater to the two competing ideas. You know, there was a time where they tried to go all out to do away with everything but Sunday. And that's, that's the problem. That's what you should be looking at going, why were they trying so hard to do away with Saturday? I mean, it's in the Bible, you know, basically it's, it's in the Bible. Sunday worship is not in the Bible. So why would you literally burn people at the stake for observing the Sabbath? And I don't think a lot of Christians realize that the, and if anybody wants to debate me on this, <laughs> good luck. But the original, what we call Christian, I don't like labels because labels, they're red herrings. They, they skew understanding. They skew definitions. They, 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 they like catch, catch uh, phrases that kind of lead to gaslighting. So if you call someone a Christian, what does that actually mean? So anyway, the first, what most people today would call Christians, they were simply Judeans, Jews, who believed that the Messiah had come. That's the only difference. In fact, the Jews originally thought that what we call Christians at that time were just a sect of the Jews. Even the Romans called them a sect of the Jews. They didn't look at them as a separate religion or belief system. In fact, religion in itself is man-made. It, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to dig into this in one video, but it's religion is something that you know, if you look at the history of it in general, it's created by men to essentially corral the people. You know, one person's called it the opiate of the masses. What Yah gave to the people of Israel was a relationship. Just like in any marriage, you, there are rules. It's not a religion. You don't say... Your relationship with your wife is a religion. You just know that you have certain functions. She has certain functions. And then together, you produce kids, produce children. So that's not a religion. And that's what Yah had with Israel. And I can go in depth into that. But today, we have all these groups that have taken that relationship, appropriated it to themselves, and created religions out of it. So that being said, um, if you know the first uh, quote-unquote Christians were Jews, and they all observed the Sabbath, nothing, like I say, nothing changed for them. The only difference between them and their peers is that 
everybody knows the Messiah had to come. They were just saying he had come. And the rest of you can't see it. There was no big change in Israel about, you know, the overall plan. The question was simply, had Messiah come already? And why didn't he establish the kingdom? And Jesus addresses that. Yahushua addresses that in the synagogue when he says, uh, I come in the acceptable year of the Lord. He cuts the verse in half and then, because the other half is I come in a time of vengeance. Well, the fact that he only quoted the first half tells you he was coming to provide grace. The second half of that verse will be the time of judgment. That's when grace ends. And I, I, I want people to understand that. If you are not keeping the commandments, that says a lot about you because you had grace and grace wasn't a license to kill. Grace wasn't a license to do whatever the heck you wanted. Grace was a time where Yah was not meeting out wholesale judgment. You follow? He wasn't doing the Sodom and Gomorrah thing on you. He was saying, I'll let the spirit work and it's working. In, in individuals and he's creating something and so he has a certain number and when that number is reached he goes all in and it says the bowl the, the bowl of his wrath is being filled up so all that time where he wasn't intervening intervening immediately with judgment it's just going into this bowl and it's going to get filled up and then when he has his number of his Kodeshim, his, his called out ones, which we call saints, right? But that's an English word. His Kodeshim, the, the selected ones, the, the called out ones, when he's reached that number, then he pulls them out of the way, you know, and people argue how that's done, but he gets them to a place of safety, essentially. And he dumps this bowl of wrath on the rest of the nation. And the nations won't know what hit them. So, anyways, just the bottom line is, and I, I go off on this, it's a tangent, but it's not really a tangent. It's kind of more of a, a trapezoid. It's coming back to square one, which is, hey, keep the commandments of the Most High. Because these diseases are out there. And disobedience to the commandments will lead to not just disease, but mental, uh, spiritual disease, you know? So stay focused. Um, the path is narrow. Um, it's, it's easier for a camel to crawl through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom. And as it says in uh, for Ezra, or second Ezra, as some people call it, uh, this, this world was made for many. But the world to come is made for few. So just keep that in mind. Stay safe. Uh, I say one of the main reasons for these, uh, for the rise in these diseases is, that, you know, they blame it on lack of condom use. But really, it's just, if you weren't doing it in the first place, you wouldn't be at risk, right? So instead of teaching people Hey, just don't do that. You know, we teach kids, oh, make sure you use a condom. Well, in this day and age, you know, maybe that's what you have to do. But we've gotten so far off that nobody's even thinking about, hey, ladies, just save yourself for your husband. You know, you, you say that today, and that's like insane. You know, so... Uh, but if, if that happened, because women are the drivers of sex, meaning they hold the keys to it, literally, if they just said, no, I'm waiting for marriage, guess what would happen to the numbers, the statistics on these diseases? They would drop like a rock. So, ladies, it's in your hands. You control that, that key. Yeah, men are going to try, but you control that key. So, you know, just... Keep that in mind. Revelation 18. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. 
And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. That is, come out of her, not just necessarily physically, but mentally, spiritually. Come out of her spiritually. Because if you come out of her spiritually, if there's a necessity to come out of her physically, you'll be able to do it without looking back like Lot's wife. <laughs> you know, she had to look back. You know, and and turns out her looking back was a little more than just looking back. She literally turned around and started running back to that city. It, it wasn't just her looking back. Um, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So you, you can see a lot of stuff is not transmissible if you're not out there doing the do, whatever the whatever, you know. Um, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God, Elohim, hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. Well, farewell, family. Stay safe. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for continually supporting my content. If you did enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell, and share this with your friends and family. I'm sure they find it interesting as well. I'm very excited to continue this journey with you. I thank you all for bringing certain stories to me, to my attention, and for continually keeping me updated with certain events around the world. I very much appreciate you all. And shout out to the channel members. And may everybody have a beautiful and blessed day. Who's in the body of Messiah. Yahusha HaMashiach. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I'll see you on the next video. Shalom.